Hello, world. This is Prophet Walker coming to you. Get, well, I'll come to you once again with part two of Minister Francois McDonald's testimony of how God has uh, delivered him from. Um, well, you've already seen part one. You already know what I'm talking about. How he spent time in in prison for uh, for murder, and uh, we just want to go straight uh, uh, right into um, the the right the, the remain of his testimony. And then, Father, we just thank you for the words that are being spoken. Let those who need to see this video, let it reach their Father. And let people be encouraged and inspired. Uh, and we just thank you that you can do all things in Jesus' name. And again, the scripture that I read earlier is uh, Psalm 40 and 2. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. So you say you had... Last uh, at the end of part one, how while in prison you kind of befriended the brother of the guy you murdered, murdered, and then that was brought to light. I really can see your uh, your story as a movie, brother. It would be so awesome. But uh, this is like the uh, a very tense moment, and so but there was forgiveness uh, there, and then you said you got to your trial. So what happens at your trial? Well, I, I get to the trial. Um, I've spent about, uh, it's probably about 280 something days in, in fighting the case uh, in Arapahoe County Jail, uh, which is the worst time you can do. Uh, and the system is designed to sort of, you know, leave you in there and, and break you down to where you want to take a deal. So right before my trial, I get offered a deal uh, for second degree murder, which carries 16 to 32 years. Um, and they were going to drop the assault in the menacing charge. Um, my lawyer, of course, after praying with my lawyer, who was an atheist, and my other lawyer, who was a Catholic, um, they decided, and we decided that we were going to take the trial to take a deal. 16 to 32 years was not a deal anyway. Uh, this was my district attorney or uh, the DA's last case. The prosecutor was trying to go out with uh, a win. And he wanted to take me down. So uh, this was his last case. So he was bringing everything he had as we entered into trial. And my lawyers had to get all the evidence and witnesses together as well. So as the witnesses started to take the stand, of course, uh, some of their testimony started to change from the night of uh, what happened. Uh, there was a couple people that came on stand and, and claimed that they couldn't recall exactly what happened. But in their statements, they had clearly stated they seen where the gun had come from. And uh, for some reason, most of the time it was intimidation, uh, their, change, their stories changed. So uh, there's a couple of people whose stories changed. And these were people that I knew that I thought well, I was cool with. Then uh, there was a couple of people, uh, the barber that was cutting my younger cousin's hair, as we started to, to get into the investigation, we found out that he was actually a relative of uh, the guys that came into the barber shop and start calling the guys and a relative of the guys that actually came into the barber shop. So he was stalling me uh, with my younger cousin. We got the phone records of the, uh, the, the young man that was calling them and it showed record that there was, there was communication leading up to the incident. Uh, and of course their, their testimony said that I had the gun. So right now, at this moment, I'm looking real bad. They're telling I had the gun. Um, and some are saying they don't know where the gun came from. So uh, thankfully, and thanks to God, there were uh, the witness statements that came through that showed that we got shot at the night the week before and that uh, the gun actually came from uh, the gentleman that had came through uh, and in the barbershop and assaulted me. Um, we get through the trial. We get to the end of the trial. Uh, There's a lot of information, a lot of information that came out. Uh, right before the trial, we found out that the man that had picked the young girl up and used her as a shield, he was also on trial for murder. He ended up uh, killing his girlfriend, allegedly killing his girlfriend and her aunt right before my trial. And uh, he had to plead the fifth. So there was a lot of information that couldn't come out. Uh, we, we weren't able to get him to take the witness stand. So this was a very heated trial, saying the least. Um, it was a lot of battle, a spiritual battle, as well as, you know, in, in the courtroom, in the system. Um, I ended up, as the verdict, and, uh, the, the, uh, the verdict came out from the jury uh, for uh, not guilty on first degree, not guilty on second degree, not guilty on uh, manslaughter, 
uh, guilty on uh, criminally, criminally negligent homicide, which is very similar to vehicular homicide. Um, I was not able to even aim the gun with my glasses off and, and hit someone, even if I wanted to. Um, and that was, that was uh, something that came out in the case. And as well as, you know, basically I was liable for the death. Of the, basically, the, the, the verdict says that I was liable for the death of someone, but inadvertently. And that was the, the conclusion that the jury had come to. And the, the, I did have the opportunity right before my sentencing. So the system works. You, you go ahead, you get your verdict, and then they schedule your sentencing for a couple months down the, the road. And December 21st, I got my sentence. And I had the opportunity to speak. And at that moment, I took the opportunity to speak to his mother, to speak to uh, the mother of his child and ask for forgiveness and, and apologize for everything that had happened. And after receiving forgiveness from his mother, the, the judge sort of cut me off and, and told me, you know, she didn't feel I was sincere. And uh, her name was Nancy Hoff. I'll never forget it. She cut me off. She felt like I wasn't sincere and that she would have gave me life if she could. And as a result, she gave me, uh, the only thing she could do was give me one to three years. She gave me the full three years I had spent uh, 326 days fighting the case. So I got time for the 326 days. Um, and I was sent to Sterling Correctional Facility. If you're familiar with Colorado and the penal system and the prisons, uh, this is the largest prison in the state of Colorado, as well as holds, you know, uh, some of the uh, most uh, hardened criminals. As I went there, they call it Gladiator School, and I began to uh, see, as I knew I would have, see uh, and run into some people that was from the gang, his gang, and uh, some people that, you know, were from, from my neighborhood as well. I took more to the church and didn't take a side and didn't really um, engraft myself with, with the gang culture anymore and, or, you know, uh, try, to, try to combat or have any confrontation with uh, his side of the aisle. So as a result, they still sort of came for me. There was some talk on the yard. There were some comments made on the yard. Uh, there was some confrontations, not necessarily physical confrontations, but there were some things that were said. And I began to go in my mind, on, you know, I have a conversation with the Lord on, you know, do you want me to go back to fight? Do you want me to go back to this person I was? Do you want me to go back? And I was going back and forth. It was a, it was a war within it. Um, was I going to be that guy again or, 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 you know, remain to be the person that God, I felt God was changing me to be? I began to pray. Megafest came on one night. And as I was watching Megafest and I was deep into spiritual warfare, I was, I was contemplating. I just had a conversation with him, uh, with him and his homeboys. And, um, and his cousin had came on the yard and his cousin was from GD, Gangster Disciple, uh, uh, which is a, a gang out of Chicago, but he's from GD. And he um, he had caught wind that I was on the yard. I actually approached him and told him who I was before he even caught wind and just let him know, hey, man, I'm the person that shot your cousin. This is what happened. If we are gonna do this, let's do it now. If not, let's just let, you know, I want you to know who I am and know exactly what happened before you catch wind and, and somebody give you the wrong version. Well, he had subsided and, and we had just went our way, our separate ways. Uh, but after a while, I guess his homeboys had got to him and he, he had started to feel some kind of way. I don't know if it was pride or whatnot, but he had, uh, he, 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 you know, it, it was on again. And they approached me and they told me, hey, listen, if you don't leave the yard, I got some threats and so on and so forth. Again, I went into prayer and I had told him, I said, listen, and this probably ain't the, the most gangster, uh, the most gangster uh, response to it. But I told him, do you know the God that I serve? Do you know who, who, who he is? I said, you know, I was just confident in the Lord. I didn't have nobody to have my back. I didn't, you know, reach out to nobody. I didn't have to talk to nobody. I just told him, do you know who God is? Do you know the God that I serve? And do you know that I'm covered? And as a result, uh, the Lord is faithful to his word. He said, if, if a man's ways are pleasing unto me, I'll make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Uh, I stayed on that yard. Um, for a little while, and next thing you know, uh, either they were getting removed from the yard, 
and his same cousin, we ended up playing on the same basketball team. We became, we, we, we made peace. Uh, but as a result of that night, it was that night that I began to war in the spirit. I began to worship and I began to praise and I began to speak. And I had just read uh, the story of Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel. And they were going up against the Ammonites, the Moabites. And I think it was one other tribe. It was really the main two tribes. And, and right before they went out, God said, set out the, the timbrels and the, the instruments and, and start praising. Uh, before you go out that night, before you go out to battle, and as they begin to praise God, as I begin to praise God while watching Megafest, uh, he said that the enemy started cutting at each other. So there was no more enemy left. As I was praising God, lo and behold, uh, there was a meeting outside. The East Side Crips, which is the gang that the, the that Nicholas Stalley was from, the, the person that I shot, and the GDs, the folks, they were the gang that his cousin was from. And you would think that both of them wanted to get me, and they did. And they were meeting, and I got a knock on the door from uh, one of the, the the members of the GD, young guy. I sort of just brushed him off, and I continued to praise God in my room. And then I got another knock at the door about 10, 15 minutes later, and it was one of the East Side Crips. Um, his name was they called him Cricket, and he knew me from Mont Bello, but he was you know he was from the other side of the aisle, the other side of the uh, of the neighborhood. And he, he, oh, I opened the door for him. I said, what's up, bro? Uh, he said, hey, cuz, listen, I don't know what just happened on the yard. He said, but uh, we told them that if they messing with you, then, you know, they messing with us. So literally the, the word became flesh and that uh, God showed up. And the, the same exact story of Jehoshaphat actually happened on my behalf where the East Side Crips and the, and the GDs, had had a conversation to where there was no more enemy. And again, I became at peace. They became peaceful. We became peace. We keep in touch now. And these are people that I, I consider friends now uh, as a result of, of the word of God becoming flesh. Mm -hmm. So I get out of prison uh, about two and a half years on a three-year sentence. I ended up getting transferred to one facility before I left. But uh, I, I come out of prison. And uh, as soon as I go to my parole office, um, my first parole visit, I'm seeing the people that set me up in in, in the barbershop. I'm seeing some oh, of the people from now, the I east remember, side. I remember, now, hold on, my, hold on uh, for a second. Now, I remember when you told the story, and, and the Francois can tell a good story, but you mentioned that there was a prophetess who came, you know what I'm saying, while you were in prison. And she prophesied yeah. that when you got out of prison, that you would get a job making $14 an hour. Did that come to pass? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the word of God, again, it, it, it is living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And, and what he promises you, what he speaks over you, he, he's not a, a man that he should lie to or the son of man that he should repent or turn away from his word. So, again, as I got out, I, I, I was, you know, I had to transfer. I transferred myself. I transferred my parole to, to Georgia as a result of me either uh, finding myself back in the same situation and having to defend myself again, or me, or, or me, you know, possibly dying because it was a heated, it was a heated case, and a lot of people were angry. That man was loved. May he rest in peace. Uh, but when I got to Atlanta, I couldn't find a job. I couldn't get a job at Wendy's. I couldn't get a job at at Walmart. I tried to get a job at Target. I got hired at Kroger grocery store, and I got fired the same day after my background check came in. I was working under the table, uh, warehouse racks. Shout out to Paul White who had given me my first job, but. My parole officer told me I had to have check stubs and I had to have a real job um, that provided a, a check stub and, you know, W-2s and so on and so forth. And unfortunately, I, I didn't have that. And when she told me she was going to send me back to jail, if I don't get that, you know, of course, I dropped my head, you know, and I went to a staffing agency. That same staffing agency told me that they couldn't hire me. And I began to remind God of a word that I had received while oh, no. uh, fighting case in Arapahoe County and uh, Sister Nina that came out of House of Joy. It's a church in uh, Park Hill, uh, Colorado. And she told me that uh, as she prayed over uh, over the room and she prayed for me, she shook my hand and she began to cry, which made me start crying. And she said, baby, listen, she said, you've been through a lot and, and you're going to go through a little more. 
And she said, but but God is with you. She said, and you're going to come out of this. And, and when you do, God is going to use your testimony. And He's going. you're going to minister to thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. And that's your testimony. A lot of lives are going to be saved. And also, you will have a, a job. God is going to bless you with a job coming out. And you will, you know, he's going to bless you with a career. Uh, she said, but to start off with, you'll be making between $14 and $16 an hour. And she gave me that specific, she said, no, she said 14 and $15 an hour. She gave me that specific number. And she began to just, you know, prophesy and tell me exactly what God was going to do. And again, fast forward, the staff and agency I go to, and I say, uh, you know, he asked me about my background check. And I said, or uh, he asked me about this gap in my employment. I said, hey, uh, he said, I thought you said you could, pass, you know, he said, what's this gap in your appointment? Were you in school? Were, what, what was going on there? I said, um, well, I was incarcerated. He said, well, when we called you, you said that you'd be able to pass a background check. I said, I, I, and technically I can. I said, but um, that period of incarceration was due to an incident that happened back in 2000 and, uh, 2004. And I gave him a story. He said, well, sir, uh, I don't believe you're being completely honest with us. And I wasn't. He said, but uh, we'll keep you on file. I don't know that we can do anything for you uh because of your background but again we'll keep you on file i walked out of there I, and my head was down and i i went back into prayer and i told god you said come on now. you said god and you said that you would and and, and, and the very next day I, I tell no lies the very next day i got a Ooh. call from that same staffing agency and they said hey uh mr mcdonald i know what we said they said but we actually need to and we've talked to an employer uh there one of the people that we sent out there is actually leaving the company this this week and they need a replacement with your uh, background. So this is similar to the story of Joseph. And, you know, and they start putting me in position uh, as a result of just, you know, reminding God to remember me, God. Remember me, Lord. Remember me. And uh, they remember me. And I, and I told them, yeah, I could be there. I'm in a car with my sister. She's like, I don't know how you're going to get there because you on the other side of town. And I ended up getting there. I uh, ended up working through the staff nation for six months. Now, I, and I didn't know if I was going to get hired. But when I got hired, I was making between that $14 and that $16 an hour. Um, mm. Or $14 an hour. $14.50 exactly. Um, Hold on for a second. Um, and, I, and I'm tearing up because I know, first of all, I know the story. and. God will be with you. Brothers, sisters who are locked up, God will be with you. You need to get that relationship with the Lord. He, this is one of the situations in your life where you need Jesus. Nobody else can help you. You need the Lord. The Lord will work a miracle for you. Even when you get out of right. prison, God will be faithful. Remember the right. vows that you you made to the Lord when you were in prison right. and, and keep those vows. A lot of people go to jail and they get saved. When they leave, they go back. Francois left to where he was. He left Colorado, came to Atlanta. You got to leave that world. The, the, the crips, the gangs, the women, the drugs, it's, it's killing you. And it will drag you back down if you let it. And so we just thank God for Francois. But he look, not, not just 14, 16 dollars an hour. I'm telling you now, you're going to know his name. You probably will buy a car from him. God has already shown me he's going to be a millionaire and going to have a car dealership. But since then, he's he working on it. A minister. He's minister of the gospel. I know. I don't want to tell all this business, but I think it's just for the glory of God. How much money do you make right now a year? Man, you're going to have me put my business out there, sir. Um, God has been, I, I will say this, God has been good to me. God has been faithful to his word. Um, again, me coming out and, and, and making 14 to $15 an hour and working my way up from warehouse work uh, to just doing the typing test on the computer. Um, and now I'm in the automotive industry. I've been in the automotive industry for about uh, 14, 15 years. Come on, now. And I tell you, I'm making, I'm making, you know, six figures in, in that industry with, with some businesses and, and that are that are, you know, helping me in, in some additional uh, income and some passive income streams. I do have come stock. On, uh, hey, three come on. He, he ain't working uh, under the table, y'all. He, he ain't working <laughs> under the table. No more working, working under the table. Professional. He go to work every day looking no sharp. You know what I'm saying? God is good. You know, Professional people, and Thank you. He's got a side hustle. You see, but Francois, and he's a he's a hard worker, brother. I remember when I stayed Francois, he had this he had a good job, this marketing company, but he also would get up in the morning and go clean. 
I think we could clean that uh book Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble. I used to I used to take the young men with me. I was taking anybody else that would help me clean them stores. But yeah, yeah I cleaned yeah. The stores. Uh, I cleaned stores and, and worked a second job and worked a third job. I cleaned the Barnes and Noble stores in the morning. I rushed to to my my day job. I got dressed in the car. Had to be there by eight. And worked the day job, and then I was a bouncer at night at at, uh, at Barnacles for a little while, uh, and then the Lord called me out of that. But uh, I had worked I had worked two jobs for probably about seven eight years just to sustain myself, and and you know now uh, thank God I, I will show y'all get y'all a tour of the house, but you know house, swimming pool in the back. I got uh, God is good. God is faithful. Two Porsches. Uh, I got five cars total uh, with the rental car business and. And working on the dealership as well, fellas to favors doing well. And um, we got house. a lot of endeavors on the way. Too. He flips houses too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, property, property language, property language where we where we help restore and renovate homes. Uh moving myself into real estate. I'm still getting uh educated and educating myself as well. I should have my real estate license Come on uh, within now. the next two or three weeks. I take my my state exam, so that's another endeavor that I'm that I'm embarking upon. Uh, so again, God is good. That's what God told me to do. Those are directions that God gave me, and as a result of obedience, uh, He has no choice but but to uh, for His word not to return unto Him void. It has to accomplish for which He sent it. So if if I leave any bit of encouragement, it's just that believe and trust the word of God. Understand that He is faithful to His word. And it is living and powerful. When I say it's living and powerful, when you speak that word, when you remind God of his promises, he's faithful. He's faithful and he'll do it. And he'll do it for you like he did it for me. Uh, he has no partiality. There's no partiality in him. And I thank you. Amen. And I give him all the glory. I give myself no credit for where I am. I give God all the glory. And, and as my shirt says, all I did was I kept faith. I kept Come trust. Come on, and that's man. the same scripture that Prophet Walker just just continues to to echo. Uh, you just got to continue to trust him. You got to trust him in, 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 in the good and the bad times. And when you give your life to the Lord, just know like, you're going to go through some stuff. But he has a plan, just like Joseph, just like Jacob, just like David. And anybody else in the word, it becomes flesh. Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel, no matter, there's no battle that he's not going to allow you to overcome as long as you continue to stick with him and, and just stay faithful to, 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 and I've made some mistakes. I've fallen, but I just kept getting back up. And that's all that is, is keeping faith no matter what. Getting back up and keeping faith. So I thank God for that. Amen. I I, I, I reiterate that. Not, but when you get out, you got to pay your vow. You can't just leave prison and forget about all the vows you made, how God kept you and brought you out. Because all he's going to do Amen. is he will back up off you. you know Amen. I mean? so you never make a vow to God and then break your vow. Remember your vow. If you got to move, you got to change your old. You can't You can't stay in the same environment. That's right. God will bless you. And I just I just know that God has blessed this, this, this man of God. Uh, there's so many things. Even though he goes to uh, Embassy City, um, Embassy City, Atlanta. Atlanta. Just, just got a new building, so we'll be moving soon off from uh, Fulton Industrial Boulevard. But but follow us. Come come holler at us. I'm also working with uh, Cairo's Prison Ministry. When I told God I, I'm going back to prison, but I'm gonna be able to come out this time. When I told him, I, you know, if you let me out, I'll come back and I'll and I'll tell him about you and tell him what you did for me. Uh, he's opened doors for me to get back into the prison system. I've been doing youth ministry, uh, mentoring troubled youth, mentoring youth, and and a uh, youth director as well. Uh, so I was faithful to my word, which made him faithful to his word. And that's part of a covenant relationship. That's part of God's promises. If you you're faithful to your your word as well. He's definitely going to be faithful to his. Amen. Well, we thank God for uh for uh, Mr. Uh, uh, McDonald. And um, hey, hey guys, uh, you can go ahead and check out his podcast, uh, Felons, uh, Favor the Felons, right? Felons the Favor, yes, hey, sir. Felons the Favor. We hear more powerful testimonies. And um, I get he is he is a man, uh, a man of God of the brethren. And we just thank God for this testimony. God will God will no matter what the situation, God will be there for you. See you next time.